Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to Sean's World. And today we're going to be talking about the iPhone 12. Now, look, this is another edition of Budget Tech where I go through old technology or new technology on a budget to help you save a couple dollars in the long run. And with the iPhone 12, you're saving a lot of money for what you are getting out of the product. Now, when this phone released in 2020, it was almost groundbreaking because it it brought back that sleek and shark square design that that was initially on the iphone 4 to the 5 and then it went away from the 6 to the 11 so the 12 brought back a really nice sharp design now look the technology is old but it still works fairly well for how old the device is i've been using it for a little bit and i have yet to see any lag or any problems with it i do have the ios 18 beta on there so that's the only lag and problems i've seen from that other than that the phone has been working well now let's look through little things and figure out why you should actually consider buying this phone for yourself or for someone else one of the main reasons would be the price point seeing how this initially released in 2024 about 800 dollars starting for a 64 gigabyte and now that you can get it for around 200 dollars or even less depending on if you get it used or without a contract you can probably end up getting it for free if you're going through like verizon or t-mobile or sprint or something like that if you just want to buy it out i think it's like 200 dollars, and that's that's not bad for the contents of what you're getting with the phone now see the price has gone down but the specs are never going to go down because they're always going to stay the same but it, it released with an a14 bionic chip and at the time a next generation 16-bit chip which makes the phone still snappy as it when it was released now see there's two 12 megapixel cameras on the back and there's one 12 megapixel true death camera on the front which makes your phone's photos look crispy clean and snappy sort of uh it's the battery for me i'm a camera nerd now the software has gotten more stable and stable and stable throughout the years even with holding up and running ios 18 perfectly well for me i've noticed a few glitches in this that and the third but that's just because it's the beta and it's going to happen but if you just have the ios 17 point whatever it is it's going to run fluidly and not and you're not really going to have any problems but it's technology so you're going to have problems but not as much as you think it is a 6.1 inch super retina xdr oled display so you're not going to miss anything with this the blacks are blacks and the whites are white now i mentioned a little bit ago about the 12 megapixel cameras the videos look great it's a fake 4k but you have to understand to the average person they're not going to notice it but that doesn't mean it's going to look 4k so to each his own but to the average person they're not going to notice that but to me i notice it very well because i am a camera nerd and it is fucking annoying it, it's whatever now see, I'm not a fan of the 24 frames per second. It just looks choppy no matter what. Even on the phone, on the camera, it doesn't look good to me. I always shoot at like a 30 frames or even render at a 30 frames so it like looks like that. The cameras don't lack at all for photos or video. They're crispy, especially in portrait mode. They're clean. Night mode's pretty decent. I'm not a fan of it, but to each his own. So look, I've been using this phone for a while. Nothing makes it seem like it's a four year old phone besides the year that it came out. And you know that's an iPhone 12 doesn't lag doesn't glitch and typically most androids start lagging and glitching and fucking up after the first year and with this being a four or five year old phone it's still working fairly well i will say if you're gonna get this phone at least get the 128 gigabyte because 64 runs up way too fast especially if you take a lot of photos how i do or even got games because you got children so it's gonna run up real fast so at least go for the 128 gig so that might up the price a little bit but it's kind of worth it and if you want to save a little bit more space, I'd say get Google Photos to save the photos instead of using Apple's. Because, I don't know, at least you can actually... I like Google Photos better than Apple iCloud. I don't know, it's just a little bit easier for me. There's nothing really for me to complain about though on this phone. Like, yeah, it's an older phone, but that doesn't really... I'm not here to be flashy. I'm not a flashy type of person, so I don't really care. If I... I I'd still have my XR if it wasn't broken. <laughs> so for the... So for these few reasons, I know it's not a lot, but these are the reasons why I feel like you should get this phone. It's on a budget, it's pretty cheap, it's nice, it's sleek, it's it's a beautiful phone, it's great to handle, there's no real problems with it. The only real downside that I've actually seen is the iOS 18 when that fully drops. There's a couple little features that are, aren't going to be on the iPhone 12, but that's just because the software can't handle what Apple is going to be putting into that software, that's kind of why. But, but that also doesn't take away from what Apple is bringing to iOS 18 for the iPhone 12. So you're not getting the full features, but you're getting a lot of them. So what do you think about the iPhone 12 in 2024? Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you want to do with it? So that's another episode of Budget Tech. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And if there's something you would like to me to review, uh, leave it down in the comments below and I'll sure be able to get to it as soon as possible. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.